Today, I want to respond to some comments that were left on a popular video of mine that I recently uploaded, which was why standing tall with shoulders back and down is not necessarily a great cue for better posture. I saw so many different statements that heel striking is bad for the body, it's bad for the foot, humans weren't meant to heel strike, and this is founded in some myths, and I wanna address those. Now, I'm not positive where a lot of this is coming from, but I'm pretty sure much of it is from the book Born to Run. But I'll get into running in a second. Running is not the same gait pattern as walking. Whenever I refer to gait, I'm referring to the walking stride. If I ever talk about running, I'm going to differentiate that and be very clear about it. Now, normal walking can be broken down into three different phases. We have the heel strike period, we have the mid stance period where the arch flattens out and the toe off period where we push off. Now, heel strike has more of this negative to vertical shin angle where we are going to be in more of this externally rotated position and supinated position of our foot. Then we move on to a internally rotated, more vertical to positive tibia angle on mid stance. And then finally, we transition into that propulsive state back into external rotation upon toe off. Now the heel itself has a fat pad, which is on average in adults about 18 millimeters thick, which is incredibly efficient at dissipating and distributing forces from the ground into the heel very effectively. This is a very important step because not only is our foot going to be set up in this externally rotated position, which is necessary to move into internal rotation, we're also going to dissipate the forces with that fat pad, and that's really important. A study confirmed that those who walked with a heel strike first pattern had 53% better metabolic efficiency in their gait pattern because that shock absorption through the heel helps dissipate a lot of the ground reaction forces, which makes walking a much more smooth process. And it requires less mechanical work from our muscles in the lower limb to help push us forward because walking is really just a matter of falling and controlled falling. It's this inner play between kinetic moving and potential which is quite literally what it sounds like energy imagine a bike at the top of a hill as we go down the hill that is the kinetic energy as we go back to the top of the hill we have more potential energy so we're constantly falling and catching ourselves and in order to do that well we need to have this shock absorption at our heel i see that people that have problems with proper heel strike also have their center of mass pushed very far forward or forward enough so that they're in this anterior pelvic tilt, anterior orientation of the pelvis, which if you just stand up and arch your back, your weight goes onto more of your forefoot. And this is not necessarily ideal. So I see people arguing for the fact that we should strike the ground with more of our mid to forefoot, but that's just going to keep us in an extended position, which has its own host of problems. If we're thinking about just the ability for the entire skeleton not to be stuck in an extended state all the time. If you don't believe me, go look at some of the most well-respected authors on the topic of gait and kinesiology. Go look at human locomotion, look at Newman's kinesiology textbook, joint structure and function. And there's also a plethora of different studies out there that go over what we constitute as the normal gait cycle and why it is so important. There's a lot of things out there that suggest that it is absolutely necessary when walking. Now let's address running itself because within running and the research on it, there's not a lot of research that is very concrete in suggesting that midfoot or forefoot strike patterns are less of a risk of injury to the lower limb than anything else. Now, when I strike the ground with my forefoot, yes, I need to move into dorsiflexion quickly, but not too quickly. I am going to have an eccentric contraction of my ankle plantar flexion muscles like my calves and also tissues like my Achilles to help slow this down to the extent that's necessary. And that is metabolically expensive. And that's not necessarily a good or bad thing, it just is. So there are some theories of forefoot striking could be better for decreasing knee injuries because you're going to move into less knee flexion, but you are going to put more stress on your forefoot itself and also the Achilles area. With the forefoot strike pattern, you also have less vertical loading, meaning that force is going down, which means that your knee isn't going to bend quite as much, which could take stress off of the knee, but they do theorize in some of the literature that you are going to put more stress on your Achilles and your plantar flexion muscles because you are going to need to have that dorsiflexion, which is internal rotation, decelerated and controlled to a certain extent. So if this is gonna go forward quickly, the muscles on the backside have to make sure that happens, that doesn't happen too fast. 
So you could be decreasing your risk of knee injuries, but you could be increasing your risk of forefoot and Achilles injuries. So there is no perfect way to run necessarily. Another interesting study was of 170 Division I NCAA cross-country runners. What they found was those who struck the ground with more of their midfoot actually had higher impact loading rates than those who struck the ground with more of a dorsiflex or rear foot strike pattern. In essence, what's theorized here is that those who strike the ground more relatively on their rear foot are going to have the tissues around the upper limb, around the knee area, which is not necessarily the knee itself, absorb those forces. Whereas those who struck the ground more of their forefoot had more of that impact absorbed within the Achilles and calf musculature. So the idea is that gait is not running and running is not gait. Heel striking is absolutely essential and it is one of the most fundamental aspects of how we move through the world in locomotion. If we don't have heel strike, then we're not setting ourselves up for success through mid stance and push off. So getting better heel strike and heel awareness is actually essential for people to have better mechanics of their foot, their leg, their hip, etc. And there is no clear advantage to striking the ground on more of your mid to forefoot relative to the heel. The faster you go, the more you are going to have to strike on more relatively forward on your foot, but that doesn't mean you're less prone for injury.